Hey there beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and today I'm going to be doing a review of the ThreadUp Closet Cleanout Kit, selling your clothes on ThreadUp, um, giving you guys my rundown of my experience. If you're not familiar with ThreadUp, it's an online thrift store. You can shop by brand, um, you can filter so it only shows you your particular sizes, which is really handy. I've personally shopped on ThreadUp about three or four times. I've had mostly good experiences with the clothes that I've purchased. So I decided to order my very own clean out kit. Um, I actually had the idea to film this after I already cleaned out my closet and sent everything in. Um, so I'm not going to show that part, but I am going to talk about my expectations and then I'll come back and let you guys know like what actually was accepted for sale, what sold, about how much I earned, all of that good information so you guys can decide if this is something that interests you. If at any point you find this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out a small channel like mine. So on the ThreadUp website, you can request a clean out kit, which is basically they send you a bag that is a prepaid package that you get to fill up with clothes that you would like to sell or donate. ThreadUp has an option where um, you can, I think, pay a little extra and get clothes returned, shipped to you if you want them back. So for me, I didn't care that much. I wanted to clean out my closet and donate anything that isn't going to be sold. So ThreadUp only accepts high quality items that are still in good condition. So obviously things that people would want to buy, um, you only get paid if they actually sell the item. So even if they decide to keep it and they put it up and they list it, I believe you only get paid when someone actually buys it. So you're really trying to send them things that are like good brands, things that are still trendy that maybe you just are tired of, you don't want anymore, but that someone else would want. Now the way that you get paid is the amount or the percent of your payout goes up with the more expensive the item is. So if your item is listed at between $5 and $20, you're going to get 5 to 15% of that item. If your item is listed at $50 to $99, then you get 30 to 60% of that selling price. So it kind of incentivizes you to send in items that can be sold for more money. So more premium brands pay you at a more premium price. I've seen a couple complaints out there that people are sending in like bags of clothes to thread up and only making like pennies on what they are selling. But if you think about it, like if you want to make more money on every individual item, I think you're going to be better off listing items yourself on a site like Poshmark. For me, I don't really have time or any desire to be like making multiple trips to the post office to go get packing supplies or envelopes or to send stuff off to be mailed. I'd rather have someone else handle it. Plus, at this point, I just wanted to clean out my closet. So once your items are purchased, you have to wait for the return period for that item to expire, and then you can cash out your earnings. I believe you can either choose to get paid out in a thread up credit by PayPal or a gift card to a different brand's website. I in the process right now is I've sent in my clean out kit. These are just like the items that came with it with different instructions. Um, so I'm now currently waiting for them to receive and sort through my kit and tell me like what they're accepting to sell or what they're going to list. Um, and then everything else will be donated. I do anticipate they are going to list a few items. I did send in a couple things that still had the tags on, which I think likely they would list. There was like a dress from Lulu's that still had the tags on because I just felt like it didn't look good on me. And I think I got it on sale, so it was final sale, or maybe I was just too lazy to return it. I don't remember, um, but I would think they would list that because there's like absolutely nothing wrong with it. I kind of forget already like what I cleaned out and what I sent in, which truly means I did not need it in my closet and it's good that I gave it away. I also sent in like a bunch of like stuff from Old Navy. So those would be kind of like um, the mall brands versus the premium brands. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what they accept. Well, I'm back. It's been quite some time since I filmed that last clip and I'm here to give you my final thoughts and talk you through the rest of the spread up clean out selling experience. So I would say it took them about a month to receive and process my clean out bag. I believe I sent it in around Valentine's weekend, like that February 15th, 16th maybe, and it was processed on March 20th. Now as a caveat, 
in between that time was kind of strange because that's like kind of when this whole coronavirus pandemic was kind of just starting to kick off, but people weren't really, you know, fully shut down yet. So I don't know if that affected the processing time or not, um, but it did take about a full month for the products to be processed and for them to select what they wanted to post to sell on their website. ThreadUp did send me an email when they um, had processed my kit and posted items for sale. However, it did go to like my spam filter or like my promotions tab in Gmail. So I didn't actually see the email right away until I went and searched for it. And then by the time I went to the website, four of the items had already sold. So it was kind of cool, like as soon as I went on, I could see that some people had already bought some of the items that were posted. Um, of the items I sent in, and I wish I knew the total number of items I sent in, but I sent in a full bag essentially, they decided to post 16 items. And they did a mix of kind of like the higher end and the mall brands, um, which is what I sent in. I sent in a mix. Some of the items that they chose to post were um, the Lulu's dresses. I sent a couple dresses. I want to say three dresses from Lulu's. One still had the tags on. Um, they posted some of the Old Navy sweaters I sent in. Um, I can actually go into, I'm going to look right now in the website. You can look at your sales and see all the items that are listed and the list price. And you can actually go in and edit the list price to lower it or raise it depending on whether you just want it to sell or if you wanted a specific payout, um, you can kind of go in and play with the price a little bit. In addition to the Lulu's dresses, I sold like a Banana Republic um, work skirt. There were some jeans in there, um, a bikini top that like I literally never once wore, um, some different shoes, like some cute wedges from Tommy Hilfiger, some Calvin, Calvin Klein, sneakers, um, just some random stuff. So yeah, they posted 16 of my items. Some of my items were having a bit of trouble selling. Some went really fast um, and there was like no, I like they sold before I even saw that they were on sale, which is cool. And then some of them I went in and lowered the price because I wasn't trying to like reclaim anything or take anything back. So I went in and like modified the price or brought it down a little bit to help it sell. Now I'm at the point where my bag is expired. So there's only a certain window that ThreadUp gives you to sell your items. And if they don't sell in that window, then you can either reclaim them and pay to have them shipped back to you or they get donated. The two items that didn't sell, in case you're curious, um, was an Old Navy sweater, which I kind of understand why that wouldn't necessarily sell because even though it was priced very cheaply on ThreadUp, I feel like Old Navy is having a lot of sales and it's not an expensive brand in the first place. So someone might just prefer to buy directly from Old Navy unless they were trying to minimize their eco footprint and just um, not, you know, buy new fashion items, then that might be a reason to purchase on ThreadUp. But I could understand why the demand for something like that would be a bit lower. The other item that did not sell was from Boohoo, and it was a faux leather skirt. I only wore it once. It was part of my Halloween costume, and it's kind of like a patent leather black skirt, but it actually, when I received it from Boohoo, it didn't look as good as it looked on the website. It did kind of look cheap, and um, the way it's photographed on ThreadUp, it, you can tell the material's not that great. Could be a great item, like I bought it for a costume, um, definitely uses for it, but like it's a leather skirt and it's like a cheap looking leather skirt. So the demand for something like that during quarantine is probably very low. So I can definitely understand why that did not sell. Now let's talk about the payout. So um, I think as I mentioned, hopefully at the beginning of this video, you don't actually get your payout. You can't like cash out until the return window has closed for the items that you sell. So currently for me, looking in my um, account here online, I can see that nine of the items that have been sold, I have received a payout for. And then there are still five that are pending sale, which means that they are purchased but could still be returned possibly. So I can see that for my entire bag, all 16 items, my total payout amount is $19.33. 
So let's break that down a little bit. The item that sold for the most amount of money was a pair of Tommy Hilfiger wedges. Um, those sold for $27.99 and I got a 19% payout, I think because it's like a name brand. And then I got, um, so that comes out to $5.32 for that item. Um, the next highest selling item was that Lulu's cocktail dress that still had the tags on. Um, that sold for $22.99. I got a 16.5% payout for $3.80 on that item. Other items that were like from Old Navy or H&M sold for a lot less and the percentage of the payout is a lot less. So for example, I sent in a cute like H&M blouse, sold for $8.99, the payout percentage was 6.7, so I got 61 cents on that H&M blouse. So you can see that it's definitely, you make more on your premium brand items and those are also usually listed for more money. So you can make a little bit more money if you're sending in like more premium brands. But if you're sending in mall brands, you're really only gonna be making like 50 cents an item as like a ballpark. So I can see that I currently have nine items that are sold and that I've received a payout for and five items that are pending sale, which means that they're purchased but may still be returned. Hold on, now I'm wondering if that $19 is taking those items into consideration. So I may actually have a few extra dollars that have not been included in that amount yet. I'm trying to do the mental math, um, which is not pretty. But yeah, I believe actually I will make, let's call it $25 off this bag, which I sent in a full bag. Um, I don't remember exactly how many items were in there, but it was just, I filled the bag up to the top. So in terms of final thoughts, I think ThreadUp is a really good option if you were planning to clean out your closet anyway and bring your clothes to a donation center. I think ThreadUp is a good choice because A, they'll still donate or recycle any items that you um, send in that they don't choose to sell. So if you do wanna make sure that your items are treated responsibly, I feel like ThreadUp has a pretty good reputation for that. And then you can also, in the process, make a little extra. It can be put towards a credit on your account if you're a ThreadUp user, or you can kind of get it in the form of a gift certificate to a, a store that um, they have a couple different options. If you're trying to earn money and use this as a way to like actually get some kind of return on investment on some of your nicer pieces, I would say ThreadUp is not your best option. I think something like Poshmark, where you're going to be doing most of the work in terms of photographing your item, contacting the buyers, negotiating, and posting the item yourself, you're gonna get a much higher percentage of that sale. Poshmark, for example, takes a small percentage of your selling price and you take home the bulk of your selling price. ThreadUp is kind of the opposite, where they're doing the work, so they're gonna take the majority of your selling price and you just get a small cut for having basically donated your clothes. If you're really focused on earning money, I would say list it yourself on a different website. Overall, the process of selling your clothes on ThreadUp is really easy because you don't have to do anything personally. You can go in and edit the prices if you want to, to raise or lower them to try and affect how much of your payout you get. But other than that, it's really all on ThreadUp. So I think next time I clean out my closet, I probably will send the bag into ThreadUp because it's an easy option. I like that they donate what they don't sell and I don't really personally feel like I wanna spend the time individually listing all these items myself. Let me know in the comments below if you've sold on ThreadUp and what your own personal experience has been or if you prefer to sell your clothes on a different website, donate them, let us know in the comments your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit thumbs up if you found this video useful. It really helps a small channel like mine and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of my videos in the future. Bye.